Now, here's Paul Gillen, author of Secrets of Social Media Marketing, How to Use Online Conversations and Customer Communities to Turbocharge Your Business, with a lunchtime discussion. Um, I want to open my, uh, my comments, just give you a little context maybe for what we could discuss about your own, uh, your own activities. And that is the change in the media landscape. And it's one thing that really hasn't been discussed at the conference today, but I want to give you some perspective on how dramatic the shifts are that are going on in the media landscape right now and what we think of as mainstream media. Maybe that frames the context for how the uh, social media and word of mouth media is enabling individuals and brands to emerge practically out of nowhere uh, simply on the strength of their own activities. So uh, I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of how dramatic the decline in media is right now. But these are some numbers that I think are, are somewhat startling. In 2009, the top 100 newspapers in the U.S. have seen circulation declines of 10.6%. That's an all-time record. That's coming on top of uh, a 7% decline last year and shows every sign of becoming a death spiral. And certainly the trials and tribulations of papers from the Boston Globe to the San Francisco Chronicle to the Chicago Sun-Times have been well have been well documented. But this is a trend that we're going to see continuing now as the um, economic model of mainstream media uh, begins to collapse. And I use that word, and not use that word lightly. We're seeing a collapse of mainstream media right now. And this is because those media are based upon an economic model that is highly inefficient. For example, if you were a retailer who is trying to sell wedding gowns, how, what percentage of the population is interested in buying a wedding gown at any given time? Less than 1%, certainly. But traditionally, you've had to buy 100% of the audience to reach the less than 1% that you really want to get. That's very, very inefficient. And of course, thanks to digital media now, we have dramatic new efficiencies, ways to reach people who have a high degree of investment and, um, and passion about a topic, and we can reach those people directly. And as a result of this and certainly other factors, we're seeing this precipitous decline in mainstream media. The average age of a U.S. daily newspaper reader is now 57. The columnist for the Chicago Sun-Times said last year, newspapers aren't dying, our readers are. <laughs> the average age of a network evening news viewer today is 63. 63. I mean, watch the NBC News some night and look at the ads. They're all for, for, for senior items you know, for Depends and Viagra and stuff that, stuff that older people care about because that is, that's what their audience is. Well, where is that market in 10 years? Reduction in U.S. newsroom staff since 2001, 45% of the journalists in America have lost their jobs in the last eight years. That's incredible. That's almost half. So if you have been, who here is in a, is in a media relations capacity, public relations? <clears throat> if you have traditionally been targeting these media to get your message out, you're getting, you have half the chance of reaching those people that you did eight years ago and, and half the space in which they're publishing and half the readers, in fact, because U.S. newspaper circulation right now is at 1940 levels, 1940 levels. One quarter of the population today reads a daily newspaper. In 1940, it was over 60 percent. So how effective are these media anymore? <clears throat> it's hitting television as well. NBC, primetime audience, way down. Fox, way down. CNN, way down. When uh, 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 um, Brian Williams took over at, at, uh, as news anchor, he was number three in the market. Today, he's number one in the market, and he's got fewer viewers than when he was number three. Look at these numbers for magazines. These are comparative statistics for magazines, 2001 to 2009. These are some of the largest, most influential magazines in America. All of them off over 60% in circulation over the last eight years. TV Guide, bankrupt. Reader's Digest, bankrupt. Gourmet Magazine, closed this year after 70 years. Modern Bride Magazine, closed. Portfolio Magazine, closed. And you know what? It's even worse in B2B media. B2B media is down more this year than any other segment of the media. So what we are seeing is that these publications, if they survive, and many of them won't, will be far less influential and reach a far smaller audience and a far older audience than the emerging new media. So at the same time, we see the facts about the next generation, the so-called Gen Ys, which are now just be beginning to enter the workforce. They watch 60% less TV, TV than their parents. They're online 600% more. 
Twitter membership up 1,900% last year. Facebook now the third, world's third largest country by membership, if you compared them to the, to the population of, of other countries. Word of mouth marketing on, dramatic, on a dramatic ramp up. So I, and so on down the line, we just see statistic after statistic that the, we're undergoing this seismic shift now from a traditional media that was browsing based to a new one that is searching based. And that's a very, very important thing to understand. In the last probably eight years, because Google has only been a major phenomenon for about eight years, in the last eight years, Americans have gone a whole, undergone a wholesale shift in the way they make decisions. Our decision making now begins with a search engine. Eight or ten years ago, it would begin with usually a publication. We would go to the library. We would browse. Today, we just expect information to be there. What does that mean? It means if you're not search optimized, you're not playing the game. Billion searches a day being conducted worldwide. You've got to be there. So these are, and these are significant behavioral shifts. You know, you think of how we've looked for information for, uh, for 300 years in a publication-based world, very, very different from how we look in a search-based world. So that's the bad news. If you're in mainstream media, that's very bad news. If you are an individual, though, who knows how to use the tools to raise your personal visibility, the good news is you don't need permission anymore. Think of how it was a few years ago if you wanted to become famous, if you wanted to become no, uh, notable in your chosen field. You would have to go on bended knee to some newspaper editor or some TV editor, producer, and try to get a, a little slice of their valuable time. And if you got two minutes on the evening news, the local evening news, you were turning cartwheels. Today, you take your message directly to the public yourself. Old media looked like this. New media looks like this. The only difference being that any one penguin today can have a Twitter account and can potentially reach every other penguin. That's what word of mouth is all about. So what this means is that we have seen, I think, a complete inversion, inf uh, influence inversion. How many people here know who Susan Boyle is? Right. Susan Boyle, if it hadn't been for YouTube, would have been a uh, British Isles phenomenon. She appears on this program in March called Britain's Got Talent. She sings this amazing song. She's a kind of a con contradiction in terms. And uh, it was an amazing story. It was a great story. It just resonates with people. The ugly duckling syndrome. What happened was that that clip made it to YouTube. And over the, over the next two weeks, reached 100 million downloads on YouTube. And that person now, her visibility, her international visibility was driven entirely from the bottom up. Secret, word of mouth spreads faster, or, or messages spread faster from the bottom up than they do from the top down if you do it right. So what happens today is that stories begin at the bottom and they spread up. And when you think of where the media is, you know, with their half the staff that they had eight years ago, what are they doing? They're monitoring Twitter. They're looking at what's trending on Twitter and that's what decides what the news of the day is going to be. Increasingly, that's what we see. So what's cool about that? You can be the heart of that message. You can spread that message from the bottom up. If you do it right, that's what this conference is all about. You have to th rethink a couple of things about how we produce information. And, you know, I was in publishing for a long time. I was in print publishing for 17 years. And uh, sort of, I'm, I'm very old. I'm probably older than anybody in this room. But I remember the, the, the days, you know, the, the, the perspective traditionally on publishing has been that you don't produce something. You don't publish something until it's fully baked. But today, it's completely different. Today, you, you publish as soon as you have something to say. It starts as a tweet. It becomes a blog entry. Maybe it becomes a podcast from there. Maybe it becomes a white paper or an ebook, which you tweet, and it spreads out, and you keep building on it. Wikipedia being the best example of that, right? Everything on Wikipedia begins as a single sentence. It's out in public as a single sentence. And over time, I guarantee you, if you look up Tiger Woods scandal on Wikipedia today, it's a very, very large entry. And that's only two weeks old. So people have the ability to, to add to your message and collaboratively build your message. And that's one of the really cool things about it. The other thing is this concept of publishing everywhere. And I know that we have a, we have a website-centric mentality, many of us, because for the first 10 years of the internet, it was all about having a website. But today, your message 
may originate or may be defined in a completely different place. These, these different outlets together, together uh, account for about a billion people. So the conversation may be going on in Facebook, maybe that should be your home page. Maybe your website or your blog isn't really that important. What's important is that you be out here. So we have to take our message to multiple media and spread it. We have to have our foot in many different places because people are congregating elsewhere. Wasn't that way five years ago, even three years ago. Three years ago, believe it or not, if you can remember, almost nobody had heard of Facebook. I mean, think of that phenomenon, 350 million members in less than three years' time. So what's happened with the social web is people are now congregating in other places. And the key to success is you've got to be there. It's not just enough to have a blog. Three years ago, it was, about, it was enough to have a blog. Today, you've got to have a Twitter account and a Facebook account and, and a Ning account and all these other things. Now, I was going to show you an example of someone who does this really well, but then I met her last night, and she's sitting in the front row right here. And um, her name is Jenny Roars, and she has a, uh, we were talking last night at dinner about crafting. Uh, now, Jenny is a, is a and Jenny, uh, she's keeping me honest here, so you, you can speak for yourself, but I'll set this up, is a uh, uh, professional uh, music therapist who has been uh, mainly focusing on taking care of children for the last few years, but it continues to pursue her, her hobby of crafting. Uh, and she has taken a very smart approach to building a social media profile, both through a blog, which is a highly search-optimized blog. And if you go to Craft Test Dummies, I encourage you to look at how she search-optimized this. Very intelligent use of categories, very intelligent use of page titles. The word craft appears in, in the page title of almost every page on cra uh, Craft Test Dummies. Is that by design? We definitely um, thought about adding the description of the blog using different permutations of the word craft, crafts, craft, crafting, so that um, Google could index it easier. That's what it's all about. It's all about making it easy for Google to index. It's a very uh, well designed, it's a very nice looking blog. It's not updated that frequently, in the order of what, every week or so, a little less than once a week it's updated. It's not critical that you be updating constantly. It is critical that you be in a lot of different places. So Jenny also contributes to Craft Critique, which is a, uh, a review, pr primarily review site, right, uh, which buys click-throughs back to her site and also search engine awareness because the more places you are, the more links you create, the more your search reputation you increases. Increase. The power of the media today the new media today is such that one person can have the impact of large organizations. There's a site called FARC.com that has, that has uh, it's a real snarky site, it has uh, traffic that is larger than all but about 10 of the largest newspapers in America. They've only got two people, two people. The New York Times has 900. Really tough to compete with that. Does anyone know what news site has the greatest stickiness of all news sites in America? What news site gets three times the time spent on site of any newspaper in America? The Drudge Report. The Drudge Report. One guy. So I guess that's where I, I'm going to sort of leave it at that and, and say, you know, where do you want to take this? Because I think this is phenomenal. If, if you are accustomed to the traditional media world where where, where influence emanated from the top down, that's all going away. It's all emanating from the bottom up now. And right now, there's a lot of destruction going on because the market is undergoing tremendous efficiencies. And when efficiency happens, that usually creates a lot of pain. The efficiency almost always creates pain because we have to destroy inefficient uh, institutions in order to create efficient ones. So right now, we're going through all the institutional pain of 40,000 journalists laid off over the last two years and newspapers closing down, and magazines folding. Now, that's painful. But at the end of this, we're going to come up with a very, very different way that we share influence. And it's going to be enormously empowering for everybody in this room who chooses to be craft test dummies uh, in whatever market you may choose to be important in.